Great intro, and thanks for that. Uh, my name's Dan Fennessy, and I'm the founder and CEO of Party the Local. And Party the Local is a free app that connects travellers and locals that want to party. The idea for Party the Local really came from my own experiences of travelling and finding that night out anywhere is better than the local, but it's not always easy to be local. And a lot of travellers experience this. They feel like an outsider when they're in a new city. They're short on time to plan things like nightlife. And they suffer from FOMO, a fear of missing out on the best local bars and clubs, events and nightlife. Party Local solves this problem. Our location-based app allows you to connect with locals and travellers in a new city, check their profiles and reviews, chat, arrange the meet up, and party. If you look at others in this market, there's, uh, there's an indication of the, the sort of scene with the, with the local scene. Uh, stay with the local sites, couch surfing, uh, 10 million users, Airbnb, it's actually three times bigger than that according to the presentation we saw this morning, 60 billion users, uh, Eat with the Local, uh, recently raised $8 million in a Series A, and Tinder, Data Local, 50 million monthly active users. So far though, there's no real nightlife with a local app or service, and that's what we're aiming to become. Uh, we're not there just yet, but we do have some good traction. We've got 100,000 downloads in almost every country in the world. Uh, getting a 60,000 registered users and we're growing between 1 and 5% week by week. Uh, 10,000 monthly active users and we've already raised some, some seed investment which has allowed us to form a great team and redesign the product. And we've had some great global exposure as well. We were number one on product times, we've been in the New York Times, Time Magazine. Um, more importantly though, we're really building a global community, a real community of people who like to connect and share experiences. Uh, this is a photo of our wall, uh, office wall in Amsterdam, of some of our most active users and some of the great experiences and connections that we've uh, been able to help create. Uh, we've got a great team. Uh, we're based in Amsterdam. We're, we're from five different continents. We speak ten languages fluently between us. And we've got a great uh, company culture of learning and hustling, getting things done and having fun. As well as that, all of the team loves to, to travel, they love to party, they love to meet new people. So like me, they're solving their own problem by working part of the local. Our vision is to become the app that connects travellers and locals in real life. Uh, obviously we're starting with nightlife, which is a big enough niche on its own, but we see a big future beyond that. We think we can be bigger than couchsurfing, which is a bit old and outdated for the mobile and millennial generation. We'd love to do some partnerships, uh, Airbnb, I think we share a lot of the same company values, so we'd love to, to partner with them once we're a bit bigger. And finally, Party the Local for World Peace, we'd like to think that we're breaking down barriers and, and connecting people around the world. Finally, uh, Portugal is a great market for us, for a country of explorers and friendly locals. We see this is a great market for us. If you want to find out more, come and see me afterwards or get in touch. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, any questions from the crowd? Party, locals, any questions? So where's the best place, place to party? <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the moment, our most active user base is in Amsterdam, where we're based. Uh, London as well is pretty big, New York's growing. Lisbon as well, it's got quite an active but smaller uh, community so far. But as I said, we're available all around the world, but we're focusing on a few key cities and really building the, uh, the community in those cities first. How do you make money? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I actually had another slide there, but maybe it stopped. Um, we want the app to remain free for users uh, initially, um, but there's going to be a premium version of the app where you pay to unlock a city and curated events in that city. What I mean by curated events is it's events that our most active users, our super locals are going to. People would pay to unlock the events that those people are going to, be able to see the people uh, who are going to those events with the added bonus of being able to meet up with them uh, there. Uh, as well as that, once we get big enough and active enough, we see lots of other opportunities to make money uh, through data, uh, partnerships, travel affiliates. So there's lots of options. Right now we're focused on, on growth and the product. Any more else? questions? Uh, what is the incentive for the local to uh, party? Uh, 
yeah. A lot of them seem to be people who either lived abroad or travel a lot themselves. They're quite internationally minded, they like meeting new people, they're highly social people, so they're going out three to five nights a week. So for them it's just a way to meet new people and uh, show off their city as well. A lot of people are proud of their city and want to show off the cool places that they, they know about. As well as that, they're making connections for the next trip abroad. Okay, thank you very much. Pato and Loco. Thank you, Bashar. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Gabor Kotens, uh, co-founder of My Wine Tour. Do you know that every year 40 million people, wine lovers, go to one of Europe's wine regions? They want to have nice experiences, they want to visit wineries, they want to taste wine. Let's meet two of them, Nancy and John. They are an American couple, they visit Tuscany. Uh, they are at a winery and they have a lovely, lovely experience, a memorable wine tasting. But actually two hours before, it was not that easy and it was not that sure. Uh, because they just came out from a nice gallery and then Nancy thought, darling, mm, let's visit some wineries, I want to taste some wine. Yeah, well, which one? Ah, you know me, you will uh, choose the best one. And Joe said, yeah, of course I know you and I can, I can do that. So let's have a coffee in the little cafe here. And then, uh, you know, I have my iPad, I will try and I will find the best one. So uh, he immediately uh, went to the Chianti Classico Consortium's website <laughs> and he found this. It's a, it's a real uh, picture, actually. If you visit that site, you will get that. Uh, in a 25 uh, kilometers radius, there are more than 20, 120 wineries. And John was in the trouble, so he said, okay, you know, I will take the coffee and then I will find out what the hell I will tell to Nancy. Uh, the good thing is that Nancy remembered that on her phone, there is an application which matches wineries and their wines with uh, uh, the tourist's uh, uh, personal taste and preferences. So uh, she started to use the app. Uh, within 20 seconds, uh, she uh, made the filters. Uh, you know, we want uh, wineries, uh, I like red, John likes uh, Chardonnay type of wine. Uh, we want to have a free tasting, but we are happy to buy immediately. Not more than 15 euros, though. Uh, and, I'm, uh, and I like organic wine. Uh, and immediately, uh, she got those wineries around them, which suits to these needs, to her filters. Uh, then she was thinking that, you know, we have the whole afternoon in front of us, so why not to visit three wineries? Okay, so here's a, uh, an optimized uh, itinerary, uh, if it will come uh, to me, yes. Uh, an optimized itinerary uh, with three wineries. Uh, and by the time John came back with the coffees, she just said, you know, just get into the car and this application will navigate us to all those three wineries, which suits to our needs. So I would say that my wine tour is an application. Uh, actually, it's a, it's a personal wine expert. Uh, it's your tour organizer, and it's also a navigator in your pocket when you are in the wine region. Uh, we are an early stage startup. Uh, we are developing the product at the moment. Uh, the MVP will be ready by January. Uh, the plan is to have Tuscany as a very condensed uh, region, uh, as the test region. After that, Portugal, three months later, and then, of course, the rest of Europe. Uh, we are looking for wine and tourism and wine tourism partners. So if any of you are interested, please let me know. Thank you. And questions, of course. We have a question there. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a subscription model uh, for the users. It's completely free. For the wineries, just be there as a point on the map and basic uh, uh, information. It's also free. But those wineries who want to have priority in terms of the listing, in terms of the tour planning, in terms of marketing opportunities, you know, they get an award and then five minutes later it will be on our Twitter, it's 29 euros per month. Yes, please. Yeah, I have a question. I already have that experience, that kind of experience in Mendoza, Argentina, but we had a tour. And the question is that, okay, you go to a few binaries, yeah, like two or three, you drink, and if you're talking about application, you drive. <laughs> How may you drink 
and try because actually after the SME winder I was sleepy. <laughs> you, 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 so, you need a good driver. You need a good driver. So, and actually, <laughs> and actually this is why the winder is also need to catch up and in, in Napa Valley they also have a special service for those people who are coming and cannot drink. Because they also need to be entertained. It's the future. We try to do something with it, uh, but of course it's not easy. We need to change the whole uh, environment. But no drink and drive, so it's, uh, it's not what we suggest, not at all, no, 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 no. More questions? Okay, one last question, sorry. Yeah. Uh, how did Nancy and John uh, find out about your app? Uh, another couple was Tuscany two months before, and the lady shared it, their good experience with Nancy, so that was their luck. Nancy and John still do not exist. They are still oh, yeah. <laughs> but soon, coming soon, coming soon. There, there, are, there are a lot of tours already focused on wine uh, regions and tasting the cheese and the wine. Uh, there are a lot of companies right now. Shouldn't you be partners with them? Because they'll drive you. And you're having already the... Yeah, uh, we, are, we are very, I mean, we think about this. First, we would like to make ourselves as the converters of the regular tourists to wine tourists. And as soon as we are somewhere, we start to, to, to cooperate with these, uh, uh, with these uh, tourist uh, uh, companies. You know, in a way, we are competitors, so we, we shouldn't start too early to do that, because otherwise it's, uh, it's not very good. Okay, thank you very thank much. You so much. Round of applause for everyone here. platform to discover places through people. Uh, let me start with this Facebook post. Uh, yeah, with this Facebook post from my friend Andre. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, he wrote uh, that he's going to Paris. And he was asking his friends to give recommendations on places to eat and go. He received uh, a bunch of comments and basically random names of the places. So he will still need to Google every single place to get more information and then one by one add pins to the map he's using. And this is Olga. Uh, she's a copywriter and she's from Kiev, but she lives in Paris for the last two years. She's using Follow My Travel to keep all her recommendations in one place. Uh, she keeps adding new recommendations every time she comes across a nice place she likes. So Andre could just go to follow my travel to discover Olga and many other interesting people there. And he would save uh, a bunch of time, uh, a huge amount of time, uh, organizing and searching the information. Uh, we all do have favorite places. It's just a matter of uh, keeping this information organized and easy to use and share. Um, block. <laughs> um, so, that's exactly what we do at Follow My Travel. Uh, Follow My Travel is a platform to collect all your favorite places, to share, uh, to easily share uh, your recommendations, and to discover new places from like-minded people and your friends. At the moment, Follow My Travel is in Russian language only. Uh, that was actually done on purpose uh, because we wanted to target specific market, and uh, we believe. It is huge enough uh, to start with. We launched in May 2015, um, and currently we have 1,500 users, and we grow 5 to 7% a week. Me and my co-founder, we are passionate travelers, and for the last five years, uh, we've been to more than 30 countries. So we know the pain we're solving. We're not making money yet, but in short term, uh, we are planning to use affiliate programs, and in long term, uh, we want our users to sell experiences. Some examples of these experiences might be when a professional uh, surfer takes you to the best surfing spot in Portugal or a bartender takes you uh, to the best bars in Lisbon. Uh, we are now fully focused on uh, bringing new people to our growing community uh, and uh, we want to bring them the best experience possible. Uh, we're not making money yet, but Okay. Um, we're now, uh, we want to focus on uh, six cities at the moment. 
Sorry? <laughs> yeah, we want to focus on these six cities and uh, to build strong local communities in those cities and to bring local curation and expertise there. Um, if you happen to learn Russian language uh, before we launch our English version, uh, you're more than welcome to join our growing community. <laughs> yeah, I was too nervous, sorry. <laughs> no worries, it's good, it's good. Tell us about your team. Uh, so, uh, it's me and Natalia, we're the two co-founders. Um, we also have a web developer and iOS developer. Great. Uh, any questions from the crowd? Yes, one question there. Um, I think I may say that I'm a fanatic local about Lisbon and I really like to share the places that I know. Um, but I feel that I've already got too many applications to do that, to do so. I've got a, my account on Couchsurfing where I share my suggestions. I've got my account on Party with a Local. And now I don't even have another one. I mean, it's too many apps, so why should I also use your website beyond the ones that I already use? Yeah, what you basically do on Couchsurfing, you just, uh, it's just information. Uh, you cannot use it in the map, right? So there are no pins. So you basically, like a lot of people, what they do right now, they uh, put all the information in the, e in the emails and they just send it out to their friends. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's not very uh, useful for me to use this information when I go to some place. I want it all to be in one place with the map so that when I'm passing some place, I get a push that, okay, my friend just recommended this one. And basically, when you are, uh, when you are creating a network of people that you trust, so you follow them. You start using your newsfeed. So you browse all the recommendations that they give you. You save any place that you like. And eventually, when you come to Lisbon, you have a fully customized guide that is uh, completely uh, only with the places uh, recommended by the people that you trust and with the map as well. That might sound like a big differentiation. You can count on me as soon as you translate. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, do we have more questions? If not, then I would like to say thank you. Thank you. Oh, I got it. Hi. Thank you. You nailed the name. Hi, my name is Carlos. I'm founder of Vivius. And I'm here to talk to you about what we are doing. We are connecting two types of people. One, those heavy travelers that know where they want to go, but they don't want to waste time Googling, searching, checking browsers, having around 400 interactions to book. And on the other hand, the travel experts in planning, travel agencies, they have access to a lot of package that most of you are not even aware about. It. Okay, so we found that pain while I was working with friends, so let's book our vacations, and we are searching a lot. And I'm a software developer and I work on the PC all the time and it was a pain for me. So we developed Ubius. How we connect these people? You want to travel, you come to Ubius and say, I want to go to this place, this way, stay in this kind of accommodation, do this kind of activities on my destination. Then all the travel agencies registered will be notified and will make a custom proposal just for you. And then we will automatically negotiate with all of them for you, so you get the best quality of relation proposal without effort. Then you just need to select one, and we put you in contact with the travel agency, you book, and have fun. This is good for the users, you get personalized offers, best quality of relation, and you get what you want without effort. For travel agencies, we allow them to have a proactive attitude, they can know their market better, they have access to a lot of users that otherwise they wouldn't have because they are limited in their local uh, place. We, before the questions pops up, we, how we make money, we generate leads, uh, we allow them to retargeting. Uh, for example, you, you want to, try to, to travel to Maldives, but you didn't accept. And a uh, travel agency have promotions for Maldives. You will be notified for that. Uh, Proposals and a lot of other premium services that we are launching now. We started working around a year ago, just two guys, and since August, when we launched the first version, we started growing. And these numbers are actually wrong because since last week they are growing higher. The team is me and Ugu, who is not here, unfortunately. Um, so we've been working alone. Next step. 
uh, last week we have added another per person to our team. So we focus on product first. Now we are working on marketing. That's why we are want to grow, and the, that person that joined us is from marketing. We are also uh, looking for new revenue streams, those premium services, and if you go to us.com, you'll find last minute promotions there. So stay tuned to that because awesome promotions will be there, and last minute calls also. So thank you, I'm Carlos, I'm available all afternoon. So you can try. Perfect timing. Three minutes. Great. Um, any questions for Ubius? We have a question here. And then we go there. Hi, my name is Guido. Um, I'm curious about one little detail. You said you have 80 uh, partners, travel agencies, yes. and you send out your client requests to all of your partners. Did I understand that right? All that can, for, uh, you have a web travel list that only provides service for the Northern Europe. Okay. If you want to go to Brazil, I won't notify them. Very well. Um, so you, at least you send them out to various partners. Yes. In the end, only one will make a sale. Yes. How do you think you keep the other ones on board if they regularly don't make a sale but make proposals? We have been talking with a lot of them. Luckily, we, sta we started to filter. For example, I know that uh, a travel agency can sell to the all, all globe, but uh, they're all countries. But their focus are on the Portuguese, Portuguese language speaking. So I will only send them those proposals. I will start to split, so everybody's at. And also, I'm not uh, the travel agency. We're close. We don't want any more now. If the numbers of requests grow, we want more. There is another question there, in the back. Uh, just a curiosity. I mean, it's like travel agencies are are a trend, or the market moves to any other part. I mean, it's like because you can extrapolate that or expand that farther than just the travel agencies. It's just because I don't know. No? Can you please repeat the first? Yeah, the travel agencies are growing, are growing, or the number of travel right. agencies. We are helping them to keep all, stay alive for now, but they are they weren't and they are not the they weren't the first target for us. Then they are not the last, but it's an entry point to the market. Okay, we have another question here, right? Very short. Have you ever considered merging with Dubai? I know Andre, I talk with him a lot of times. That question never pops up, but maybe. Oh, it does now. Yeah. Maybe it's a <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you very much, Yubia. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Andre Faria, and I'm here to tell you about this Portuguese startup called Azimut. So, Azimut uh, works as a free. Oops. Where should I point this to? All the other way around. Oh, this one. Oh, okay, thank you. Oops. Okay, so Azimut is a free mobile app that works as a city guide. Well, so far, nothing new, right? We know there are plenty of city guides already there. Uh, but Azimut wants to make it a little different. So, uh, although it's, um, it allows tourists to have access to hundreds of points of, of interest, as well as to book any tour, attraction, or restaurant, we wanted to go a little bit further. So we decided to create this network of hosts and make them our ambassadors. So basically what we did, we gave each host a personal code uh, so they could recommend their best, their favorite places to their guests. By using this code, the tourists have access uh, to discounts while hosts make a commission every time the guests make a reservation on the app. So how does it work? It's very simple. Hosts just have to go on the app and click on their favorite experiences. And that will be the list that will be shown to the tourists as soon as they log in on the app. Uh, in this way, we believe that this is an easy way to help hosts uh, avoid hosts to repeat the same information over and over again every time they are doing a check-in. So, uh, to make this process a little bit easier, we started to distribute Lisbon maps through a network of over 500 hosts. And from where tourists 
can point their mobile phones to a QR code where they can download the app for free. Uh, also, the host code is printed on the maps. We are distributing now 30,000 maps per month, free of charge. So if by any chance we have some Airbnb hosts here in this audience I'll, and you don't receive our maps yet, I'd like to invite you to come and meet me after this presentation so I can tell you how you can start receiving this uh, Azimut maps for free. So basically our business model wants to make sure that everyone is benefiting from it. So on one hand, the hosts get to recommend their best places while they receive a commission every time the guests make a reservation. On the other hand, the tourists have access to a, a specific and a particular list that the hosts prepare beforehand and also have access to discounts. With this win-win situation between, between the hosts and the tourists, we also believe that we are helping tour companies to help the, uh, to grow their businesses. The fantastic team behind this project but has different backgrounds besides me, and I also work as a tour guide during the weekends. José Diogo is an Airbnb host, Alexandra, she's a travel lover, and Christina, she's half Danish, half Portuguese, so she brings some international environment also to the team. Thank you very much for your time, and I'd like to invite you to download the app. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to start with the first question. Do you have numbers of how many people downloaded the app through the QR code? Uh, not through the QR code. The thing is that the app was launched a month ago. So of course our numbers are still, um, we are still in the beginning of it. Perfect. So the, the, the maps are out now, so we are still um, getting that da data. Keep me updated because I'm interested okay. in the QR okay, code. Okay. Okay. Any questions from the crowd? There is a win-win win situation, no questions? I'm not sure I understood the host thing. If several hosts may recommend the same thing, will they all share the same permission? So the hosts... They several hosts may recommend the same restaurant or the same activity, the same something. If that activity is chosen by the tourist, how is the commission split? Five ways? Twenty ways? So the, the, the commission comes from our part of the, of the profit that we make by selling uh, a certain... Um, when we sell, a, a, when we have a booking. So each booking gives us a commission to us and it's from that commission that we will uh, pay the, the commission to the hosts. So yes, we have, if we have 10 um, bookings for the same tour, um, we were going to have 10 commissions of the same level. Because the commission have 10 recommendations for the same booking. I think I can answer that. I think that there is one code for each uh, recommendation. Yeah, yeah. So if you use that code, yeah, why we only, only follow the one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, I didn't get your question. Thank you. How much do you get from the different places? Is it the same commission from restaurants, from uh, from tours? Is it different commissions, and how much that of that goes to to the to you versus the host? So we usually work with commissions of uh, twenty percent with the tour companies and the attractions. And the restaurant have um, uh, a free uh, a fee. Uh, specific fee, so it's from that fixed fee that we have the, those commissions and 20% uh, from the other ones. So the host receives 4% of the, um, the booking and the tourists have discounts of 3% and we get the other part of it. So we end up with more or less 8 to 9 which makes our um, business uh, profitable in a big scale. So of course we are working on that, we need to have more bookings to make money. I know that there is another question there, but can you ask it afterwards? Yeah. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Azimut. So, I'm Topin, CEO and co-founder of Scenario Labs. We come from Finland and we have a long background in uh, civil engineering, urban planning and software development. Uh, we developed a service for forecasting the feasibility and risk of urban structure. Okay. So property damage uh, from uh, lack of maintenance is really a big problem and causes lots of uh, loss of value to the properties. 
is a big problem for the property owners, but uh, of course for the property owners who uh, generate lots of revenue to their property. So let's say hotel owners, uh, loss in livestock or revenue. So if the buildings are properly maintained, the little building systems and components in the, in the, inside the buildings, uh, they will fail faster than expected and will cause lots of damage and huge loss of value. This is something I took from a uh, hotel engineering manual. Saving dollar maintenance today will cost you two dollars tomorrow. For infrastructure, it's actually even more. Our magic is that our algorithms take the open data, all the relevant ones, building footprints, uh, geodata, all that. Uh, we crunch them in little building systems and components and parts of the buildings, and, and then the fun starts. Because each of the building systems and components have service life estimation. It's an international standard. And, uh, and when the service life is, is uh, exceeded, the probability of failure will, will, uh, will rise. So, uh, with the open data and with our algorithms, allows us to show which buildings are at the most risk now and in the future. Uh, this is a globally valid uh, system and is validated now in a couple of urban development projects and in, uh, and in property insurance risk projects, as we speak. Uh, this is actually a property insurance property risk thing we did for Manhattan. Uh, we could actually point out the risks and the maintenance plan for these areas or these buildings without asking any data from anybody. Uh, okay, so if these uncontrolled events happen, the owner's cost will also, of, of course, skyrocket. There will be actually lots of other problems. With our service, we can make preventive plans for the maintenance and, and renovations and save these guys' properties, life cycle costs, are lots of money. So, guys, these are the tasks that the maintenance and uh, these renovation duties are, duties are something that these property owners have to deal anyway. So actually the question is to optimize the thing so that uh, it will be preventive of course, but interfere as little as possible with the functions for the properties. So if these maintenance risks are not uh, carried out in time, uh, these really costly risks and events will surely happen. Uh, I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, saving a lot maintenance today will cost you $2 tomorrow. Remember, our urban structure is facing the biggest makeover in human history, and we can actually forecast that. Scenario Labs, thank you. Thank you very much. First question is who's applying? Uh, Public sector at this point are uh, big uh, development projects with, uh, with builders, with construction and urban planning experts. Another other one is of the property insurance uh, side. And we're now in the phase of validating the model actually at this point. So we started in uh, five, five months ago, but we have a background of over 10 years. In, uh, yeah. Any more questions? Yes. So, if I got it right, what you developed in terms of intellectual property is a, an algorithm that kind of predicts uh, the level of deterioration of, of a building. That's what differentiates you from any other type of evaluation of the building condition, is yeah. that it? Yeah. Okay. Because you have that expertise inside the team? or Yeah, we have the expertise, yeah. 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 I like, uh, by the way, there is a slide that said risk property management for dummies, right? That's what, okay, it's intentional, right? Yeah. Okay. So, without further questions, last question, shout out. <laughs> so if, uh, hello, uh, so if the Beetle League was already repaired, how do you know uh, to your algorithm the stage of, of the building at that specific point in time? Uh, yeah, uh, of course every big renovation needs a permit, right? And all the permits are mostly the, in our market areas, they are open data. So we just fetch them and we put it in the right place and then we just utilize it. Great, a big round of applause for uh, again. I'll do a little, I'll, I'll do a little test. Yeah. Hi. My name is Nina, and I'll tell you about channel. 
So you may not all be creative professionals, but I'm sure you all have friends who are creatives. That means designers, architects, curators, artists. And uh, not many people know this, but creatives base their work on a lot of research. And I can safely tell you that they're now struggling with keeping it all organized and in one place. Creatives are forced to switch between the numerous tools, Pinterest for images, uh, Behance to organize their portfolios, uh, Delicious for links, and there are plenty, plenty, plenty other tools. And they end up wasting a lot of time, and they, and they don't keep the big picture in mind. It's really ridiculous. And with that thought, and with, with the realization of this idea, we build ChannelKit. So ChannelKit is a web tool that enables creative professionals to collect and organize all the content they need for work into a very neat visual knowledge management system. Now, how does this work? So all files of all formats, links, files, <laughs> notes, images, are organized. They are uh, categorized according to preset categories or according to tailored categories, and then are either kept private by, by the creatives uh, as their personal knowledge or shared with their colleagues or their followers. Uh, we have uh, an MVP that's live, and we have about 4,000 early adopters, creatives, who are using it and who are very happy. Um, and uh, the reason why we're here is that among these creatives, we have quite a number of tourism and travel professionals. Uh, what are they actually doing in Channel Kids? So they are uh, real estate agents who are uh, creating databases of apartments. This is one example, an actual one. Uh, these are designers and uh, city branding specialists that are creating mood boards with videos, articles, research data on the cities that they work for. So San Francisco example from an urban planner in San Francisco. Uh, and these are travel agents that are collecting places and experiences that they share with, with whoever uh, is going on a trip. Uh, next Friday, at Beta Eye, we're launching the new version of Channel Kit. Uh, it will be equipped with new uh, additional professional features that our users have requested. And it will be a paid product with an individual and a team plan. And we aim, we're actually aiming to be the number one and the first one, uh, the first tool for creative professionals uh, to create a, a personal knowledge management and a team knowledge management system. And we have just the right uh, expertise and skill set to do it. Uh, we've all uh, done numerous projects together and know our audience extremely, extremely well. Uh, we're not looking for money, we're looking for customers. Uh, so if you're part of a creative team or uh, a small organization willing to organize your knowledge, Come reach out to us and come to our launch. That's on Friday at Beta I at 5:30. Thank you. So, uh, Nina, I guess that your product was not created for tourism, right? Uh, no, but it turned out to be that it was largely used by tour for for tourism. So it's actually uh, they find value for for keeping and guarding stuff for tourism. Any questions from the crowd? Yes. Uh, I'm an artist myself and I was very interested in your idea. Uh, do you get it? Is it for free or how much it costs to... Uh, so there's, it's, it's paid. Uh, there's a trial period, but it costs, uh, the, the individual version costs uh, some dollars a month. Thank you. But uh, we, are, we will be offering uh, coupon codes if you come to our lodge on Friday. Uh, I think we, will, we can sort something out. More questions? Yes. What, what's the development strategy to acquire uh, creatives? Are you looking at partnering with uh, maybe with large uh, agencies on the agency side, or you're more targeting individual creative guys that are working freelance or? Uh, we have a two-way strategy to do it, so the first assumption that we are living with is that an individual, even a freelancer, he's usually part of either one or more creative teams. So by reaching out to an individual user, we are uh, within a step reaching out to a team or several teams. So that's our sort of acquisition strategy for less formal teams um, that consist of freelancers and non-freelance professionals. 
And then we're also um, going to agencies, creative agencies and design firms directly and presenting Channel Kit to them and reaching out to them uh, in order to get the whole team on board uh, at, from the very beginning. So it's a two-way strategy. Well, we were testing how, how, that, how both variants work. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, yeah? Okay, everybody hear me? Yeah. Uh, so my name is Pablo, and I'm the founder of Titans. I want to introduce you to Tiago. Tiago is a young entrepreneur that runs his own startup and has several business needs. For example, he needs to get customers, and he also needs investment, and also he needs employees. So he decides to network. But he found out that there are a lot of opportunities and it's hard to detect the best ones. And also, frequently, he came into conversations that comes to nothing. So he eventually thinks that networking is a waste of time because it's a random process. He doesn't get anything out of it. But when he had a system that finds and connects him with other professionals on his behalf, that's exactly Tidus. Tidus uses artificial intelligence to find and connect you with other professionals at any established network around the world. It saves tons of hours because it does the research on your behalf. It highlights the information that you need so you don't have to do several tasks or process information. It's just the <coughs> info that you need. And it's a website breaker because you can come to someone with a goal, with something to introduce. So it's easy. How it works, you can select your events around your area, tell the system what are your current needs, and the system gives you your recommendations. You can choose if they are wrong or not, or good, because the system learns from your choices. So, this opportunity targets to the third sector professionals in the world, which is 1.3 billion. We are attacking the first segment professionals that are using networking tools. How do we make money? It is like we charge the organizers because we are targeting to events as first, also to communities and enterprises. So we are going to charge and are charging right now for a subscription plan. We give the networking tool plus demographic statistics insights about the audiences. And also we will connect with our API because some people have their platforms so it makes sense that we have an API to connect the recommender system. Also sponsors, most important, because they are looking for events and communities to sponsor to the target audiences. So we'll charge for targeted searches. The competitors, the market is very fragmented. Those are good news because we can attack a segment and then from that segment take all over control of the market. And events are our first segment. These are some of them. As you may see, it's like our Campus Madrid or Bedai our beta beers, but I wanted to make a special mention to beta because they have taken the risk to take the platform and prove the platform today. So I would like to a round of applause for them. It was great. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, just one second. The team, as I like to say, is like we are the hustler, the hacker, and the crafter. So it's like we're going to revolutionize the world. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the crowd? Question there? Uh, when I received your email, yep. I, I did check. Uh, I did check titles, and I did a test like, to see. I selected to to find journalists here among the crowd. Yep. But then today, I decided not to use it further or to. How many people here have done so? And. Are people really using it? Because I didn't. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Actually, we are, we are improving by every band. I mean, it's like we are running, at first we were running one in them, and now we are running four. As, as I like to say, it's like Pablo Picasso didn't came through cubism in just one day. So it's like we're doing the same. OK, it's like until we get to our vision, it's like we will do the same. So we are testing, testing, testing are things that we are seeing that are triggers, which are good, open rates are good, click rates are good, but we still need to improve in other parts. I mean, that's like, that's fair, fair to us. Thank you.
Another question here. Oh, well, what's the artificial intelligence part of your algorithm? And did that algorithm, did you run it before coming to to Zoom Challenge? No. The first, uh, thank you for the question. The first iteration, we launched it at the hackathon. So it's like Miguel were struggling with which kind of iteration we could launch because we wanted to make something simple, just to test the concept of that was through volume four. So it's like we are now using from the searches that we did, it was like searches on LinkedIn, searches on Twitter, the public data, it was like we analyze that data and find the best connections in internal. So it is like a text search algorithm. And then, uh, so you have feedback from users? Yeah. How you saw the, the yeah. context of the network was? Yeah. I mean, it's like a way we are gathering so the data. The question is the learning part of the field. Exactly. 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 How many have downloaded Zoom Challenge before? Yeah. 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 Yeah.